Hey, hey, good morning, guys. It is uh, four days left. So today, uh, including today, we got four work days left until SEMA. In today's episode, um, we're gonna be playing with these vents. No idea what else we're gonna do. Whatever's in the title. You know, at this point, we just gotta do as many things as we can and knock them all out. So whatever's in the title, if that's what we're getting done, that's what's in store, stay tuned. I came in first thing in the morning, I turned off our vacuum pump. Um, you know, lesson learned on this, we used an old vacuum bag that had kind of been through some stuff and we didn't put enough breather cloth in there. Uh, so that was a bad idea. I think this had some small holes on it. We left, this is a really, really good vacuum pump provided to us by the guys over at Fiberglass. I'm gonna put a link in the description. So that thing can run all night long. So we just left it under vacuum all night long. These are looking very good. I'm very happy with the way these look. So let's get them unbagged and see how they are. All right, these came out pretty dang good. So. Um, um, as I was expecting, anywhere that there was a big wrinkle in the bag, it created a wrinkle in the resin. That's okay, that's, that's creating a high point. It's fine because it's very easy to sand down. What I really was going for is what we got, which is this nice uniform shape that's all infused with resin. So it's got resin in it, it's nice and strong. These feel very sturdy and durable, and we have something to sand into now. So the next step for these is block sanding. We're gonna be block sanding these whole things, make them all nice and smooth. So then we can clear coat them. Over here, we got Oscar <laughs> welding up some tubing. So we decided to change our game plan. You know, with just a couple days left before SEMA, it's time to move, make, make changes, right? Anyways, we're gonna cut this off of here, build a tube that goes out from the top there and over to here so we can actually access it right here. That's gonna allow us to fill the tank all the way up to the top so there's no air pocket between the top of the lid and the rest of the tank, which will be pretty cool. And it'll allow us to utilize this, you know, kind of hole in the car right there so it's not just some empty hole. So win-win, uh, Oscar's gonna be building that neck and getting that all done so I can hopefully paint that today. Oscar's almost done with the uh, the new neck that goes on to here. Did you rem remember to drill? You did, of course. Why, yeah, why wouldn't you? Oscar does everything great. I don't even know why I'm asking. Everything that I do today that's stupid, I'm blaming on the fact that I'm very sick, I'm all hyped up on Sudafed and truly, and you know what, I just deserve a pass, okay? And I've been editing video all morning and it's miserable. I hope you guys appreciate the videos coming out. I, sh I should be working, but instead I'm editing. Anywho, you know what, what we gotta do now? Air to water intercooler needs to be plumbed. We have to, see what we're starting to realize is we're, we're, we're looking at every spare inch on here. You know, we're starting to utilize every space and everything like that. And the, the amount of hoses that we gotta run for the air to water intercooler is a ton of stuff. And uh, we gotta have it, so it's time to install it. That's my, that's my task for today, I'm gonna get started. The air to water reservoir is done. So this is really, really cool, guys. So uh, Oscar shaved that thing off of there, right? And then we're gonna have another heat shield that comes across there for efficiency so it doesn't heat up from the exhaust. And then you can see that tube running up, just barely see it back there. That whole thing's gonna get painted later tonight. And then it runs up, over, and out right here. So this is a 3D printed piece that we borrowed off of the other side for the fuel filler neck. Um, the one for this side is on the printer right now. Uh, this gets bolted into here right where we want it. We'll kind of set it somewhere where it looks nice. And then and this is a functional, um, this is a Mishimoto, what is that, 1.3 bar pressure cap. And then if we take that off, it drains into the air to water reservoir. So that's, that's really cool. I'm really happy about that because we didn't have a fuel filler for this side, so it uses that side. So uh, I'm still working on building a bracket to mount the water pump right here. I've got my routing all ready to roll. So once I get that bracket done, I'll get that bracket bolted in there and then I'm actually gonna be starting to make the lines. And this could be pretty simple. Make the lines, run everything, run it to the pump, turn it on, should be good to go. All right. 
that. I've built a bracket. Oh, Jesus. Tripped. I built a bracket um, and we got this kind of loosely mounted in here. That's the protective layer. I'll peel that off. That's going to get painted the same color as the frame. Um, so this mounts in right here. Uh, reservoir is over there. So the reservoir comes down into the pump here, pumps up straight into the heat exchanger, then the heat exchanger out through the core. And then it's gonna come down to another heat exchanger out through the other core and then back. So we were gonna do a T system, um, but it was a lot simpler to do it this way. The important thing to look at about this is it's all even. It goes through one heat exchanger, one core, one heat exchanger, one core. So they'll both get the same amount of cooling. We won't have like some half and half type of thing. So uh, now I have to make hoses and this takes a long time, but they gotta get done. So busting them out as fast as I can. Lots and lots of hoses. Oh man, really ties the room together. <laughs> Oscar did a phenomenal job. This is the what, what I would consider the top piece of the rear scaffolding. So I mentioned this in the last episode. Nope, I mentioned this in the episode that came out today, which is definitely not the last episode. But anyways, you guys know we've had a game plan. We're following Kaisel's rendering. This is a Siesto Elemento style rear scaffolding. Um, it's mostly cosmetic, but it also acts as a rear impact bar and it's gonna hold our diffuser. So then we have the triangles that come down here and then from there, they're gonna spread back out and, and mount the diffuser. So this is uh, nearly completely welded up and looks phenomenal. And while Oscar was doing that, I uh, we installed the pump. The reservoir is good to go. Uh, and then all the lines that need to happen, I managed to actually do it in a somewhat clean way that I think looks really cool. So we just have one line here and one line here and they're uniform. Uh, so that is all really, really good. The next thing I wanna show you guys is our carbon fiber wide body kit. In the last episode that you guys saw that we were working on that, uh, we got it all wrapped in carbon, and then after that it was resin, sanding, resin, sanding, resin, sanding over and over and over again. And Kyle has done some really, really awesome, very selfless work hanging out in that paint booth, nonstop sanding on those carbon fiber wide body pieces uh, until they looked phenomenal. Everything was going great and we were right on track to having a situation where we could display them as raw carbon fiber if we wanted to, say later on, although the game plan was always to have them wrapped. Uh, but unfortunately, at one of the later uh, layers of resin, we had a mixing issue where unfortunately there wasn't enough hardener mixed in with the resin and the resin stayed gummy. So once that tried to sand out, it caused a lot of hazing and fogging within the panel. And at that point, the panel was never gonna be able to be kind of just clear coated and look super pretty all carbon. But not to worry, the game plan was never to have these things be displayed as all carbon. It was always meant to be uh, wrapped, the white color to match the rest of the body and everything else like that. So at that stage, we went ahead and started using body fillers where we had low spots rather than using resin and other things that were a little bit easier to work with. And Kyle did an amazing job of making sure that these things were very smooth and had the right features and just looked like a professionally built body part, which is not an easy thing to do. There's easily over 100, maybe over 200 hours put into this wide body kit since the last time we showed it on film. And it came out absolutely amazing. Kyle did a great job. So with no further ado, let's install our wide body kit. The wide body kit is on, uh, on one side. So you can see it's a really, really good fit for our wheel and tire. We have a little bit of tuck here. It's actually overlapping a little bit here. I would like a little bit wider tire. I will talk with Nitto about maybe getting a little bit wider tire to kind of push this out. But overall, I mean, it looks so good. So we already got this piece wrapped. As you can see, this goes white, the quarter panel goes black. The shape of it with the extra little bit of pearl like shows all the curves very, very nicely. And it really, really, really came out very nicely. It's so cool to have this thing that was based on a little metal skeleton that we do now be like a full-on rear real carbon fiber piece that we can bolt onto the car it's just so phenomenal and you guys saw yesterday we're working on those vents that are going to come up in here i really want to get those done because this is a very very big piece and i want to kind of like you know break it up a little bit but it, it just looks so good it's so crazy and when you see it from the back that's where it really starts to 
starts to become evident like how big of a tire we're running with all this other stuff going on and with that scaffolding adding in there now you can see as it's housed in by the bumper how cool that looks it's all really really starting to cut and come together so very happy about it but we're on the SEMA build schedule so now it's time to take everything back apart get the uh we're gonna get all these reservoirs out of the car so i can start prepping these bad boys for paint Well, things got painted. You might have noticed that the last time I was uh, filming this, there was there was something right here. While things were drying, really unfortunately, this thing hit the deck. Um, the paint went on it really well, but then we got some some scraping up there, which isn't bad because that's hidden under a bracket. And then there's a little chunk right there. So I'm thinking touch up paint because SEMA deadline. We don't really have the time to repaint this whole thing. The rest of it's totally fine. So hopefully that'll be good. We're gonna let these things dry up and then they will be getting back in the car. Kyle's working on a little bit of repair. Um, race panel's given us a lot of work to do. So we, uh, I don't think you guys saw this on camera, but off camera, we threw some carbon fiber behind a piece of plastic. And then this is gonna get some fiberglass filler over it. You know, Kyle, we could probably just use body filler. We don't even need fiberglass. I didn't realize how small that is. We were gonna do fiberglass. We're gonna just do body. Maybe I'll break it right now, actually, and then we'll really need fiberglass. Anyways, we're just gonna do a little bit of body filler on that and then sand it off smooth so it can be ready to go to wrap. I'm gonna get started now on this hatch. I've got real high hopes for this hatch. It's gonna be a very, very hard piece to make. What I want to make is, so we have the red piece that goes across here. I wanna make a carbon fiber extension that goes across here. And then I wanna make two aluminum pieces that go this way. Everything needs to be like dead on straight and match up really nicely. And it's, it's gonna be very hard to build. Uh, so I'm gonna start now. Update time, Oscar has finished welding the wastegates on. So these wastegates uh, and the blow off valve that we have are all provided by TurboSmart. Uh, they make really, really, really good products. Uh, these, uh, these Gen V wastegates are the highest flowing and fastest actuating gates on the market in each of their class sizes, which is really impressive. And these things go through like a lot of testing and a lot of R&D. And these things go through like a lot of testing and a lot of R&D. They told me that um, they test these things with exhaust gases at 2200 degrees for 45 minutes without water cooling and, uh, and with water cooling more than 24 hours constantly running through them. So they can take a ton of abuse and they have high quality parts. So I wanna give TurboSmart a huge shout out and a say thank you for uh, hooking us up on this build. And there will be a link in the description to their website if you guys wanna pick up some blow off valves, wastegates. They, they have tons of good stuff. Go check them out. I was gonna build this top piece uh, coming around here and then put it, wrap it in carbon fiber. Uh, and then we uh, realized that I had another hatch outside and um, it had a top trim piece that was absolutely perfect. It was made out of fiberglass so I could work with it a lot easier. It's that piece right there. You probably saw it on here already. Uh, that hatch cost me roughly $5,000 and I just cut the top off of it. But oh well, SEMA crunch time, got to get it done. So that piece goes on there, that piece goes there. I'm cutting the rest of the structure out now and then I'll design my little pieces that I'm going to build into here and then we'll have this thing done done. Let's go check on Kyle. Sanding up the vents, they're looking very good. We're gonna get these things in the right shape and then spray them with a gel coat and hopefully get them in a really, really good shape.
build assembly is growing great. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Oscar's gonna pull the exhaust manifolds off for hopefully the last time. Well, I don't know, we might wanna heat wrap them off the car. It'd be a lot easier. Yeah, you have to. Anyways, one of the last times. Uh, we got some 3 8 inch stainless steel rod that we're gonna be welding from the flange up the runners. Uh, I don't know if you can see those right around there uh, to help support this thing. We made it out of some pretty thin um, metal. ETS was kind enough to give us all new stainless steel schedule 40 so we can rebuild these later. But we really wanna make sure that this thing has a safe drive to SEMA and hopefully on the dyno on the way to SEMA. So we're gonna reinforce them as much as we can right now. Oscar's in the process of reinforcement. These are our stainless steel reinforcement rods. They are meaty as all hell. We're not messing around with these reinforcements. I'm hoping they'll work, maybe for a long time. All right, guys, well, sorry we weren't really filming, but we turned a problem into a really fun solution that I really like. I think we actually totally improved the car. So here's a situation that we were seeing. As we uh, put this frame in here, um, it's a little bit higher than this quarter panel right here, and then right here, it's like way higher than the quarter panel. That could be caused by one of many, many different things, but the reality is, is that's the situation we're in, right? We have our body kit that goes right here. It would look really weird if I had like this piece and it overlapped here and all that stuff. So we talked through a bunch of different options, and the option that we all really liked the most was the idea of just these bars not existing. This piece still existing on the back here, and that piece still existing up there. So what we have to do is we're gonna go ahead and cut the bars out and it'll actually look really cool because then it shows off our heat exchangers just shows kind of that we got some shit going on down there um cut this bar off get rid of that that will still be mounted by the hatch holes and it'll be kind of funny because it could lift up like that then that makes this independent and we're going to mount it on its own but then we can also angle it so it matches down with this angle and we're going to space it off just like a finger's width or something like that so it makes a nice little kind of vent looking thing right there which i think will be really cool so i'm going to take this thing over there and hack it up Exhaust manifold supports are done. We decided to kind of make it pretty simplistic. We're tying into the flange off of a straight piece that doesn't heat up very uh, hot. A lot of the heat comes in here. This is where they were getting red hot. So we're kind of bypassing that, connecting here, and then connecting all the way back up there to help kind of take the load, take the weight, and then solidify it coming down with, you know, gravity and things so that's all welded up uh and and done next thing is they're gonna get heat wrap moving on right now i'm in the other room editing episodes so you guys are, stay caught up um oscar is going to jump into some of the front aero stuff we're gonna be working on cutting up aluminum to make our front splitters now you guys always always hate when we make our front splitters out of aluminum so i wanted to be 100% sure that we did that on this build. So no carbon fiber front splitters, it's too expensive. These are basically just for show. We will never drag race with these. They're not gonna be super functional. They are to make the car look like the rendering because it looks awesome. and he did awesome stuff. Who would have thought? <laughs> so the rendering calls for us to make a slice out of the back side of this coming through here to place a piece of metal in here uh, for cosmetic reasons. It looks really, really cool. Oscar drew out this awesome thing like using math and measurements and all this great stuff. My battery's dying. So uh, he, he's gonna cut it now and then we're gonna take these vents out, cut this stuff, and then we'll be able to place that thing inside the bumper. Awesome. Awesome. 
Oscar just finished cutting and inserting our first crazy piece. So you can see how this is going, straight Batman. Now this looks really good. Uh, it's, uh, it's exactly to the render and to the spec that we wanted it to. And that is our first piece. Our under layer will come up and actually kind of almost meet up with this piece right here. It might, well, we probably won't make it actually meet, but it's gonna come up and come into there. So that is really, really cool. One piece down on the very, very complicated front arrow. back the parts have um, the gel coat on them and it is it's still got too much waviness in it so we're gonna let it dry overnight and we're gonna see what we can do with it to it tomorrow we're either gonna be sanding it down and then clear coating it or we're gonna be sanding it down and wrapping it one of the two so Kyle's moving on to wrapping something else exhaust manifolds PTP the guys that are infamous for making the best turbo blankets in the game uh, wanted to send us a little care package for this build. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Um, so they got us some stuff to go around all of our hoses that run up and down to our turbo. So that's oil um, and uh, water. And then some exhaust wrap as well. They gave us some turbo blankets to try out, but since we are in the Garrett turbo booth and uh, we built an insane car with turbos coming out the top, I don't really want to cover them with blankets right now, but maybe someday. So right now though, exhaust wrap is definitely the name of the game because we have stuff next to our exhaust so Kyle's gonna start exhaust we're wrapping these babies up Coming off the back of two losses on the wheel speed and the vents, I figured let's do something super technical, really hard to do, and if we screw it up, it'll make the whole build look silly. Sounds good, sounds like a plan. Rear quarter windows, we, uh, we don't have them. This one got burnt out. The other one was pretty burnt up, pretty charred. Rather than buying those, replacing a bunch of molding and doing that stuff, the bill was a little bit too high, I didn't really like it. I wanted to do something fun with carbon fiber. So what I'm gonna be doing is building a carbon fiber surround that's gonna go extra long. It's gonna go this way to fill in the gap that our quarter panel leaves. <clears throat> it's gonna come up here, and then I'm gonna cut out a nice little window hole right here, put a little Lexan right there, and maybe a little venting right here, maybe two like little slots or something, just so it's not one solid piece of carbon fiber. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my template and then I'll get that cut out of carbon fiber. This is the hour, the darkest place, Dante's 
fun of the devil's maze. It's a good world. You want to man the switch inside, the uh, the whole kill switch? Sure. All right, guys, I want to give you an update on the wiring. We've hit a pretty big milestone. So last time I told you we ran into a bit of a snafu. Um, we isolated what needed to be used by the Lamborghini system, and it was running a lot of amperage, um, 240 amp uh, fused circuits. So we know that we needed a relay that was like massive. We got a relay out of an, a starter solenoid relay out of an old Ford truck. And that is actually what turns on our Lamborghini stuff. So we can have things like headlights, blinkers, um, the, the MMI control system in the center console, the fans for heat, uh, the windows, uh, and the brake lights. So that's, uh, I'm, I might be missing some, but anyway, so we, we, uh, ran everything up. Everything's relayed, everything's fused. Um, and so Zane, go ahead and turn it off. So that's, that clicks this massive solenoid down here off. And then uh, let me show them something. So oh, also power steering and some other things. So like our, our tail light right now will go into emergency mode when he turns it back on. Go ahead and click it on. So that turns on the Lamborghini system. So it's a flick of a switch right now, turns on the entire car. It's very cool, very, very standalone. That also turns on the ECU and some other things like that. So that is, you turn that on, the car is ready to go. Don't steal my car. And then we also did some cool stuff with the Haltech ECU as far as programming um, temperature wise. So we have these triggers that when it hits a certain temperature, it triggers the water pumps, turns on all the water pumps in the car. And that's what two of these relays are. And then when it hits another uh, temperature, it triggers and it turns on all the fans. And we just got done testing that out. These Mishimoto fans are ripping. Sounds really, really cool. Everything is fused properly. Everything is relayed properly. This is like a really good kind of home cooked up method of getting this stuff together in the proper way so it's all safe. I'm really happy about it. So Zane and I just finished wired up, <laughs> wiring up something really fun and, and pretty cool. So you guys know that we rigged this door with a servo so we could shave the door handles. So then I got online shopping for key poppers and stuff like that. Basically the way that this Lambo is wired up right now, I don't know if I should be telling everybody this, just don't steal my car. I have insurance, but that would suck. Uh, so anyways, the way that it works is um, this Lamborghini key is actually the real key for the car, but the car just does not care about this thing at all. We used it once to turn the car on and now the car just, it doesn't care. It really doesn't care. And honestly, all we're using the car for is that small list of little things that I mentioned earlier, or at least the Lamborghini brain. So eventually we'll delete all that stuff. But so this key just is useless, right? But I like the look of it. I like having a Lambo key in my pocket. So <laughs> I was on, I was online and I found these, which look oddly similar, but just a little bit smaller. And no joke, the company name is Lambo. Lanbo. This is a uh, this is a central locking a door locking kit that just is a, like a lot of wiring and stuff like that. So we wired up this kit to the trunk popping mechanism, and uh, so normally there's a little bit of gasketing in this door that's going to kind of apply some pressure. So I think the door will pop open, but we might add a spring. But I hold down, and the door opens up. It's pretty cool, guys. <laughs> so we got we got popping doors on the Lambo, which is which is nice. That's our anti theft right there. No door handle. And while we were getting that done, Kyle was applying some meaty, meaty looking uh, exhaust wrap to try and keep our temperatures and our engine bay down. So um, this PTP uh, turbo blanket exhaust wrap is going to do work wonders for our water pump down there, helping to not heat it up any more than we need to. Uh, so we have that done on both sides. We're gonna install that tomorrow. And Oscar uh, got this thing to a mad state. So we need to, um, we need to get that front bumper 
on here and finish bolted up. This thing gets mounted into here now that we're done with the electrical. Zane and I also tucked all the wires and everything. So this is close to finalized, pretty damn close to finalized. So then that whole thing gets mounted underneath here. And yes, it looks insane, but it's gonna fit the rest of the car. So don't you worry. All right guys, it's 2.30 a.m. We started work at nine this morning, so it's getting pretty late. I've got some sanding to do, and then we're gonna call it a night. So that's a wrap on this episode. This was our second to last day. So tomorrow is our last day to work on this car. It is gonna be an epic all-nighter adventure, I'm sure, but I think we're gonna get it done. So tune in for that one. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you guys soon. Peace!